This is an anime recap video, and in this video, I'm going to show you an emo boy named Ichikawa, who makes his beautiful classmate, Yamada, fall for him. The anime starts with Kai and others asking Ichikawa about his broken arm. Kai tells him that Yamada has told them everything, including how he falls on the snow mountain in Akita. Just then, Adachi, seeing the attention Ichikawa is receiving from the girls, gets jealous and warns him not to get cocky in front of him just because of a broken bone. Ichikawa's grasp on his female classmates' attention stops when they notice his Akita keychain. Before they leave, Yamada whispers in his ear and informs him to come to her if he's ever having trouble. Just then, Hara sees their heartfelt conversation and looks at the keychain of Ichikawa, which matches with Yamada's, and believes that something is going on between them. Later, Ichikawa meets his classroom teacher, who asks him about his broken arm. His teacher offers to lend him help by assigning him a classmate who can assist him in his studies and take care of his arm. He suggests Yamada for this task, believing that she is close to him. However, Ichikawa turns his request down, stating that they are not close to each other and they barely talk with each other. He assures him that he is fine and will find somebody from class to help him. When he enters the classroom, he sees Yamada, who heard everything, and gives him a dissatisfied look, causing him to panic. She then leaves, causing Ichikawa to realize that he has blown everything away after getting a little bit close to her. At his desk, he begins to copy the notes but realizes that he can't write them with his left hand. He believes he'll need someone to give him a copy of today's notes. Yamada sees this, and before he can say anything, she leaves the classroom. After a few minutes, Adachi comes in and gives him the written notes, informing him that Yamada requested her to copy those notes for him. He even tells him that Yamada has called him a kind and cool guy, believing that she might be interested in him. Feeling jealous, Ichikawa gives him the killer look, causing Adachi to retreat. After school, he confronts Yamada about his conversation with their teacher, and apologizes for saying those words. He informs her that he does not want to cause any problem for her, so that's why he tells her that he doesn't want to rely on her. However, he admits that if something happens to him, then he wants to rely on Yamada. Hearing this, Yamada smiles and says that she already knew this from the beginning, causing our boy to go low and cover his face. While walking home together, she asks Ichikawa to give her his bag so she can hold it. Ichikawa initially denies it, believing that the bag is heavy and she might hurt her hands. However, he then realizes that if he doesn't do so, he might upset her. After giving her his school bag, he asks Yamada not to converse with Adachi too much, causing her to wonder if he's jealous. She playfully asks why, but Ichikawa doesn't give any answer. After that, Yamada helps Ichikawa with things for several weeks, including eating lunch, reading books, and copying notes. Ichikawa reflects on it all and admits he's not used to Yamada's methods. During class, Ichikawa hears Adachi and other male classmates discussing a magazine. Adachi, the cheeky guy, believes that the magazine must have some racy pics, but another student informs him that it is an idol magazine with Yamada in it, causing Adachi to go crazy after seeing her photos. However, he wonders what Yamada is doing in the magazine since she is a model. Ichikawa informs them that despite being a model, Yamada appeared in several variety shows and movies, and her model agency must have told her to do it. The boys wonder if Yamada's trying to become an idol, causing Ichikawa to think that she never told him about this. Just then, Adachi wonders what Yamada would look like in a swimsuit. But when Yamada passes by, he puts a hand on his mouth and stops thinking about it. Later, Yamada asks Ichikawa what he, Adachi, and the others were discussing earlier in the class. Ichikawa clarifies that it was nothing special, causing Yamada to think that they must be talking about boys' things. The two then visit a convenience store, and in her excitement, she shows him a magazine that features her. She shares details about her experience working with this company and their staff, but she stops midway, realizing that Ichikawa might feel bad about this. However, our caring boy, always loving and caring, informs her that he likes her usual look and when she is honest about everything. Hearing this, she purchases magazines for Ichikawa, and the two leave the store. On the way, Ichikawa plans to ask questions about Yamada's work so he can learn more about her but hesitates to ask it. Yamada shows him more photos from the magazine and asks Ichikawa which one he likes the most. Ichikawa says that he does not like any one but admits that she looks completely different than she does in the magazine. Hearing this, Yamada realizes that Ichikawa must have seen the magazine before, to which Ichikawa confirms it, stating that his sister accidentally brought the magazine yesterday. She then informs Ichikawa about how different the idol life feels in comparison to her normal one, but she completely enjoys it. During their home economics class, Yamada tries to break eggs but ends up messing them all up. 
Hara chats with Ichikawa about what he is doing over winter break, to which he replies going over to his hometown and then breaking his hand. She then asks Yamada a similar question, and she lists a bunch of things she is doing over the holiday, including spending time with Ichikawa on Christmas Eve. When Yamada asks Hara about winter breaks, she confirms that she and Kanzaki visit a shrine, and things get awkward between them because Kanzaki shows up with his grown-out sideburns. Due to that, she doesn't know what to do in these types of conditions and asks Yamada what she should do. Yamada looks at Ichikawa and then tells her that she does not have someone in her life, so she doesn't know. Suddenly, their home economics teacher arrives and tells them to tuck their bangs under their bandanas. Ichikawa, whose hand is still injured, does not know how to do it, but Yamada helps him out, causing her also to laugh at his current look. While she assists Ichikawa with his bandana, Hara again realizes something is up between the two. The three then reunite with Adachi and another classmate over the food they make in class. Before Yamada eats Adachi's dish, Ichikawa snatch it and eats it first. He tells Adachi it tastes great. Hara notices Ichikawa's keychain falls onto the ground, picks it up, and hands it to him. Yamada remarks how cute the keychain is, and before Hara can ask Ichikawa about it, Kanzaki arrives and chats with her. In the library, Ichikawa thinks about whether Hara knows what's happening between him and Yamada. He thinks about how Yamada might respond to Hara if she asks questions about it. While helping Ichikawa, Yamada falls asleep. Apologizing for doing so, Ichikawa admits that she apologizes to him frequently. To lift Yamada's spirits, Ichikawa shows a photo of his sister during her coming-of-age ceremony. After that, Ichikawa displays a snowy landscape photo he took, as per Yamada's request from Season 1. By accident, he discloses to Yamada that this is how he broke his arm causing her to feel sad again. Ichikawa clarifies to Yamada that he fell because he wasn't careful enough. The two depart the library in an awkward situation. The next day, Ichikawa thinks about Yamada and why she hasn't been in contact with him as much lately. Kai, Moko, and Serena confront Ichikawa and asks him about Yamada's recent unusual behavior. Yamada enters the class, greets everyone, but realizes her keychain is missing. Ichikawa is unsure whether he should lend her his keychain or not. At the same time, Kintaro's teacher announces an early end to today's lecture due to upcoming weather issues. Ichikawa encounters Hara and Kanzaki by the lockers. Hara brings up the keychain incident, informing him that Yamada is very upset about the keychain. Ichikawa, knowing that how much he cares about that keychain, leaves the school to search for it. He searches on the way to the school but Moko spots him, informing him that he is searching for the wrong side and directs him in the right direction. While on the hunt for Yamada's keychain, he runs into Yamada. It turned out that Moko sent Yamada a photo about Ichikawa looking for something. While crying, Yamada informs him that she looked everywhere in her home but couldn't find it. Before she can cry even more, Ichikawa sees her keychain hanging on a tree. He picks it up and hands it over to Yamada. She expresses her gratitude for his help in finding it. Ichikawa sneezes, and Yamada suggests he stop by her home to warm up, much to his shock. Inside Yamada's apartment, Yamada turns on the hot water using the house computer, imitating the electronic voice saying it is preparing a bath, and Ichikawa tells her not to mimic it. He asks about her parents, and she says they're at work as she grabs a towel and wipes down his hair. She asks what's bad about it but becomes aware of her actions and tells him to wipe himself down. He then walks into the bathroom and tries to keep himself calm. Yamada asks how the water is from behind the door. And Ichikawa replies that he hasn't gotten in yet but quickly finishes undressing and sits himself down in the tub. He begins inspecting the tub, looking around for things of Yamada's, but quickly stops himself from doing so. He begins to get up, but Yamada appears in the doorway and calls his name, causing him to dive back down into the water. He asks what she wants, and she replies that she brought him a change of clothes. He gets out of the bath and looks at the clothes she brought out, realizing it's her school sports jersey and pants but notices that his underwear is missing. He awkwardly puts on the sportswear and attempts to sneak out of the bathroom but is immediately caught by Wantaru. Yamada walks into the room and offers him one of two different hot pot flavors in a package. He chooses one and considers how the situation he's in is like being surrounded by sharks on a flimsy raft. As he begins to walk, Wantaru bites his pants, causing his clothes to begin to fall off him. Yamada immediately jumps in, grabbing the pants and pulling them up in close contact with Ichikawa. Ichikawa joins the dog by bowing on the floor. 
after managing to put on his underwear. Yamada comes out of her room, holding a book and now wearing a bear-themed hoodie. He asks why she changed, and she explains that she got it as a gift from Mo but hadn't had a chance to wear it. They sit down at the table before the active hot pot, and she talks about how on days where she'll be alone until late, she always makes on Abe. She then looks at him and asks if they can eat hot pot together once in a while. But Ichikawa swiftly changes the topic to the book she brought from her room, which is revealed to be her graduation album. Ichikawa looks at her official picture and notes that she's eating in all of the candid ones. Having finished looking through her pictures, he brings up the piano in the corner of the room, asking if she plays. She says she took lessons for about a year alongside ballet, English, swimming, and kendo, quitting them all quickly. She comments on how she tried all of those things but never felt like she had real talent in them. She said whenever the other kids in her classes ended up doing better than her, she would get frustrated and immediately quit. When she did, her parents would make her favorite foods. She says that she has been blessed to be around so many great people but that lately she feels like a nuisance, and she fears that one day she'll do something that will make someone truly hate her, and she begins tearing up. Ichikawa tries to comfort her, but she brings up when he didn't talk to her for a few days before winter break. She asks if there maybe was a reason for that and begins to wipe her tears away, saying that she's being annoying. Suddenly, Ichikawa gets out of his chair and embraces her with a hug. She grabs onto his jersey, and he openly apologizes for lying, saying that he was too weak and was afraid of getting hurt and tried to hide inside of his shell. Later, Yamada serves a hot pot bowl for Ichikawa, and they begin to talk. Ichikawa remarks that she's starting to behave like an adult but adds that being an adult isn't all that great. She laughs, acknowledging that it may also be true. Suddenly, she realizes that she hasn't checked her phone recently and has received several line messages. As she reads, she mentions that her mother is near the convenience store, revealing that she received the message 12 minutes ago. The two are shocked as they hear the lock tumbling across the room, indicating her mother's attempt to enter from the cold and snow. Sani walks into the apartment, announcing her arrival. Yamada greets her, and Sani notices the extra pair of shoes, asking if she has a friend over. Yamada explains that Kai is visiting. Inside the room, Ichikawa panics, questioning how he keeps getting into these situations. Yamada reassures him, saying it's fine, and that she has friends over all the time. He inquires if she ever has male friends over, and she denies it. Shocked, she takes him into her room and closes the door. Outside, Sani asks about the remaining hot pot still on the table, which Yamada claims she made herself, and instructs her to take a bath. Ichikawa, listening from the door, suggests that her taking a bath could be his opportunity to escape. Sani then informs Yamada that her father will be home soon and heads to the bathroom, giving Yamada a chance to go back into her room with Ichikawa. She tells him that her father is on his way, causing panic in his eyes. They sit down on her bed, and he asks what kind of person her father is. She looks at Ichikawa and reveals that they have similar personalities. Sani bursts through the door just as Yamada gets Ichikawa under the blankets. She marches up to the bed, inquiring about Kai's allergies and if it's okay that she ate from the hot pot. Yamada tries to downplay things, claiming she ate most of it, and Ichikawa attempts his best falsetto imitation of Kai, apologizing for intruding. Sani leaves, seemingly satisfied, and the two kids apologize, with Ichikawa clarifying that his presence led her to lie to her mother. His eyes wander to her windowsill, where a bottle of royal milk tea is sitting, and suddenly, she tackles and pins him to her bed. She leans in close and says that this is payback for last time. She asserts that it's fine even though this is the first secret she's kept from her mother but hops off him and declares herself an adult. Ichikawa, covering his face, retorts how she thinks that way despite calling herself in the third person at home, causing her to blush, and he pleads with her not to tell anyone. Outside the apartment, Yamada waves Ichikawa goodbye after giving him a coat. He calls his parents to come and pick him up at the convenience store on the street and makes his way to the elevator, beginning to ride it down, exhausted. She reflects on all the secrets they managed to keep and contemplates how different her mother is compared to what her outer appearance implies. When the elevator doors open, a giant of a man wearing a chef's apron underneath his coat is standing higher than the doorframe of the elevator, and looks him over, staring at the Yamada 2-3 emblazoned on his jersey. Ichikawa runs off, intimidated by the titan of a man, who looks back at him as he passes, and Ichikawa vows never to return to such a scary place as a high-rise apartment. In Ichikawa's room, Lucifer Nigorikawa lectures Ichikawa, highlighting the progress he's made with Yamada just from visiting her apartment. 
Ichikawa attempts to dismiss it, claiming she treats him like any of her other friends. He reflects on not understanding the difference between the distance in friendship and lovers. Leaving his room, he starts biking to school, realizing he no longer has his cast but noticing something wrong with his voice. At school, he encounters Yamada and Chiai. Chiai points out his healed arm, and Yamada, Pulling Chai away, mentions she noticed first. Chai shares a silly story about Yamada eating rice balls, with Yamada correcting her. Ichikawa responds with a non-committal that's nice, and Chai laughs, saying he's the same as always. Yamada asks if his arm is completely healed, and he mentions he can't lift heavy things. In the classroom, Yamada sends him a text, suggesting it's fine if he doesn't want to talk in public but asks him to at least look her in the eyes at school. He turns around to confirm, and she brightens up. He considers that the problem isn't just about eye contact. Later in the day, they meet up in the library, and he mentions having trouble speaking. Yamada panics, thinking it's a cold, but he clarifies that his voice is just cracking. Unconvinced, he distracts her by comparing his right arm's thickness, offering both arms for comparison. She squeezes them but quickly stops, still concerned about him being cold, even as he continues to deny it, with his voice cracking again. He explains that his voice is undergoing changes, reflecting on how he previously mentioned her growing up. Now, he acknowledges his own fear of growing, contemplating whether she perceives him as just another friend. He's content with that notion for now. However, she expresses amazement at his statement. Excitedly, she lists potential changes he might experience, such as a deeper voice and facial hair growth. She offers to get red rice, but he clarifies that's not the reason. Taking his arms into her hands, she compares them, noting that his right arm didn't get thinner, his left arm got thicker. He reflects on how she consistently notices things about him that he doesn't, and she eagerly anticipates his changes. Leaning forward, she expresses her desire for him to call out to her all the time once his voice deepens. Realizing their proximity and her unintended closeness to his chest, she recoils in embarrassment. Nigorakawa materializes and encourages Ichikawa to pursue it as they both look away from each other. In class, Moko declares it's 7 days, 13 hours, and 23 minutes until Valentine's Day, wondering what they should do. Our most popular girl, Yamada, proposes getting along with the underclassmen girls, talking about their love for sweets, and walking around the school when the day finally arrives. Hearing this, Moko chooses the chocolate idea and wants to make it for junior students, and some for all the boys. Yamada agrees and declares they will make chocolates at her house, inviting everyone, including our emo boy too. On the day of, Ichikawa goes to Yamada's apartment, finding Serena and Kai there. Kai asks why he's there, causing him to evade her question but walks away, saying that he was passing the area. After leaving the girls, he believes that Yamada didn't invite him and he should have realized it from the beginning, but looks at her text where she told him to be ready for today. Just then, Moko arrives and asks what's wrong, and points to the building, grabbing him by the collar and leading him back. Inside the elevator, our emo boy wonders if he and Moko are friends, based on what she said at the family restaurant at New Year's. After that, our popular girl, Yamada, welcomes them to her house while eating a chocolate bar. They head inside and Moko warns Ichikawa about how strict her mother is. Yamada's mother, after greeting all the girls, sees Ichikawa and wonders why a boy is doing in her house even asking how he knows her daughter. Afraid that it will cause problems, Moko grabs onto him, claiming he is her boyfriend, which shocks everyone. Now at Yamada's apartment, our emo boy tries to fashion the button of his apron, but Yamada walks over to do it for him. Her mother glances over with a curious look and she stops, to which Moko steps in to do it instead. Her mother, Sani, sees their relationship and asks how long they are dating, but Yamada tells her to just leave them alone. Just then, Moko tells Ichikawa that she wants to brainwash Sani so that she cannot question their relationship. She then starts giving orders, telling Ichikawa to do things and calls her by her name, and causing Yamada to get upset at how close she's acting. Serena, realizing that their lies are causing problems, hits the table and shouts that this isn't working. Our emo boy, not liking the atmosphere, leaves to do dishes, and Yamada walks up beside him, asking him if he's having fun, with a bitter look on her face. Unsure of what to do, he goes to the bathroom to clear his head, concluding that he should probably just leave. Just then, he sees Nigorakawa, hanging onto the ceiling, telling him that he needs to fix this situation if he wants to date Yamada, otherwise Yamada's mother will recognize him as Moko's boyfriend instead. After that, Ichikawa attempts to escape but is confronted by Sani on his way to the door, who asks if he's going home. 
He thinks about Nigorikawa's words and suddenly apologizes to her, declaring that him and Moko are not dating, and leaves. He collapses at the door, telling himself that he wants to believe in miracles and himself. Suddenly the door opens up behind him, and he is pushed away. Sani asks if he could perhaps be Ichikawa, and he offers an awkward yes, and she says she knew it. She tells him that she already met with his mother during the parent-teacher conference, and reveals that Yamada talks about him a lot causing our most popular girl to burst through the doorway and shoving her inside. Ichikawa begins walking off, but Yamada grabs him by the sleeve, asking him to stay. He agrees, and she gives him her signature shoulder tackle, asking him why he didn't immediately deny Moko's lie. He reveals that if he denied it right away, he might have had to go home, and then she would have had to make another lie just like the last time he came over to keep him in her house. They then head inside and see all the girls are in a horrified state. Just then, he sees a titan-like man telling all the girls how to make a chocolate recipe, and wonders who he is. Yamada introduces him as her father, revealing that he works at a restaurant as a chef and cooks French food. But before our emo boy can say anything to him, he leaves and goes inside his room. All the girls, terrified at his look, wonder where he came from. But Yamada apologizes to Moko and thanks her for her help in keeping Ichikawa there. Just then, Ichikawa realizes that Yamada's father was the man he met in the elevator the last time he came down. He tries to calm himself, thinking that there's no way he remembers him, but he sees him leering at him from the doorway. Yamada asks what is wrong, and as he tries to explain, her father comes up behind them, causing them to move apart. Just then, her father named Yuki asks Ichikawa if he plays games, to which our emo boy replies with an awkward yes. The two sit down on the couch and begin playing, with Ichikawa being told to pick first. Sani comes and apologizes to him, revealing her husband has no sense of personal space, to which he claims that nobody else in the house plays games with him. Hearing this, Yamada comes in and declares that she knows how to play games too, even taking the controller from Ichikawa and placing her hands on his shoulder. Suddenly, Moko arrives and sees all this, causing Yamada to leave. She leans over to Ichikawa and asks if he's releasing some kind of special pheromone, which he denies. She says that a fancy chef in a high-rise apartment should look cooler. However, when Yuki pulls back his hair, her opinion seems to change, and her face lights up. After the chocolate is ready, all the girls head to Yuki's room to give him some chocolate. Yamada, seeing an opportunity, suddenly grabs Ichikawa and pulls him behind the nearby curtain, offering him a piece of the chocolate. He says that it's good, but maybe too sweet for his taste, to which she says she's glad that he's here before pulling a crumb off of his face and eating it herself. After leaving the house, Ichikawa, Moko, and Serena head home together. On the way, Serena asks our emo boy if he's been to Yamada's place before, revealing how he knew the apartment number immediately, and that he didn't ask for directions to the bathroom. Hearing this, Moko believes they are dating, but Ichikawa shuts her down, saying he only stopped by for a short time. He then thanks them for the help today, which Moko says is fine, but Serena tells him not to get overly smart with them. At home, Kana yells in disbelief that her brother made chocolate at Yamada's apartment as she returns from work. He clarifies that everyone did, mentioning all the girls, to which Kana believes that he is already building a harem. Just then, Ichikawa's phone rings, and he rushes out the door while Kana slyly brings up how much of a hurry he's in. In his room, our emo boy talks to our most popular girl who asks him how he felt about today and wonders how he felt about her mother and father. He reveals that he expected her parents to be more strict based on their appearance and a bit scary, but ended up being kinder than he expected. She brings up her conversation with her father who asks her for Ichikawa's smitch friend code and how he wants him to visit his house again. After they say goodnight to each other, Ichikawa sits with his sister and drinks some soda. She suddenly asks if he plans to confess to Yamada, causing him to spit take. She apologizes, but he clarifies that he isn't sure he has the confidence and isn't sure if she even likes him or not. She explains that he is still in junior high school and will grow further, and the things around him will change too, alongside his feelings for Yamada. However, Ichikawa reveals that he doesn't know whether his life will change or not, but one thing he is sure of, and that is, his feelings for Yamada will not change, and he will always like her. However, he also believes that Yamada lives in a high society where she is also a most popular girl who is loved by anyone, and if she had to go far away from him tomorrow, he is sure that she will forget about him in no time. This causes our emo boy to cry and then reveals that he wants to be her boyfriend. The next day, Ichikawa is riding his bike and runs into Yamada. 
she asks if she should give the boys chocolate, and Ichikawa, grabbing our most popular girl by her collar, asks her not to. She turns to him, shocked, but agrees that she won't. Yamada walks the halls when two of her fangirls approach, offering Valentine's chocolate. She thanks them, walks up to Kai, and announces that she's going to make another round, to which a frantic Kai replies that she made five whole tours already. Meanwhile, Ichikawa considers the date and how it's a day like any other, while Adachi complains about the concept of friend chocolate, and how it's a conspiracy by chocolate companies to make boys sad. Inside the classroom, Mo dumps a collection of chocolates on Ichikawa's desk, announcing it's first come, first serve for the boys. After they take their pickings, our Mo boy, Ichikawa glares at the remaining piece, asking Mo to move it. She asks if he took one, and he says no, and that he doesn't want it. She says she figured as much, which is why she put them on his desk, and leaves. Yamada then comes up and snatches the remaining piece for herself, saying that for today, I'm a boy, while Kai berates her for her greediness. Nadachi asks about a nut in his piece of chocolate that looks vaguely like a heart, wondering if it might be a sign of romance to which Mo says she regrets giving him any. Adachi then asks Ichikawa his opinion, claiming they're both pure-hearted but just gets rebuked. In the library, Yamada plays shogi with Ichikawa but uses tear-all chocolate instead of traditional shogi pieces. Despite not knowing the rules, Ichikawa eventually agrees to play, and after some back and forth, Yamada concedes defeat. She says that the winner gets all the pieces and pushes them towards him. He adds them to his bag and obsesses over how he got chocolate on Valentine's Day. Back in class, Adachi asks the other boys if they have any other chocolate. They show off Mo's pieces, and he claims that unless it has hearts on it, it's just friend stuff. Ichikawa quickly shakes his head, determined not to act like him. Mo, sighing, declares that just giving out chocolate isn't enough, and that you need to be clear about your intent and feelings or it just causes confusion. She says she should have given the ones that specifically said friends on them, while Yamada sulks at her declaration. Outside, Ichikawa walks out of the building when suddenly Yamada grabs him by the collar and drags him around the building. She points out Hara and Kanzaki, and how Hara is giving him a bag of Valentine's chocolate. Our Mo boy Ichikawa says that it's silly to be jealous over chocolate, misinterpreting her interest, and causing her to yell out how that's not what she's saying. He thinks about how strange she's been acting today and decides to head home. Just then, Yamada hops onto the back of his bike, with her legs hanging off the sides. She requests a ride, saying that riding like this is scary, and grabs onto his side with one arm. As he continues, she asks him to go slower because a single day is a long time. Still riding on his bike, Ichikawa reminisces with Yamada about the last time they rode double, saying they rode past a police station and how much it made him panic. She claims she didn't even notice, and he continues, saying that he was going to ask her to get off, but her comment about him being afraid of change really bothered him. She asks if she really said something like that, and he says that she was right, but that she's the type that enjoys change, so she wouldn't understand. She says he may be right as she leans in closer to him, but that she may understand it right now because she's happy in the moment, but then declares that it isn't enough. She says that she is hungry, and they stop at a convenience store. Inside, they look at a Valentine's display, and they get embarrassed as he comments on how expensive everything is. She ends up with a chocolate bun, and he asks about all the chocolate she was given by the first-year girls earlier in the day. She then asks him what kind of chocolate says romantic to him. He says that's a tough question, thinking that if you don't just say it outright there's always the possibility it can be misunderstood, like with Adachi. In response, she pushes the remainder of her chocolate bun in his face, leaving a stain on his cheek. He thanks her for the food, and she reaches over to wipe his face with her finger, leaving a heart shape, before running off with a goodbye. He considers what his heart was hoping for and rushes back inside the convenience store. Outside, Yamada contemplates while holding a cupcake with half the kanji for love emblazoned on it in the negative space around the powdered sugar. Our Mo boy, Ichikawa, suddenly runs into her as he pedals, stopping, relieved that she is waiting. They both reach into their bags, but he fires first, offering a melty kiss fruity strawberry chocolate to her. She looks confused, as the date is wrong for him to be giving her a gift. But he reminds her that in the classroom, she said that, for today, she would be a boy. She takes the gift, and he furiously pedals away, leaving her delicately holding the box up to her face. At home that night, he rolls around in his bed in the fetal position, covering his face in shame, saying his actions were definitely gross, and questioning the brand of chocolate he bought her, wondering what a melty kiss even is. His phone pops up, and he gets a message from Yamada that she is outside. He suddenly gets up and heads out, seeing her at the gate. 
Ichikawa meets Yamada outside his house, and she says that she changed up her routine for Wantaru's evening walk, and realized how close she was to his house, so decided to drop by. They decide to go for a walk, and she offers for him to hold the leash. They go to a vending machine, and Yamada decides to play a game, pressing the button for the drink she wants and a drink she hates at the same time. She gets the black coffee and so offers it to Ichikawa, which he thanks her for. They find a bench to sit at, and she tells a story about Kai and some ants. But Ichikawa interrupts her, saying that she's been acting strange all day. She counters saying she's always strange, and he agrees. But he asks if she's cold, and she says she's fine and thanks him for the chocolate from earlier. Just then, she asks if he got any chocolate today, and he considers what she gave him and his family, but answers no, and instead asks if she gave any chocolate. She also says no, clarifying that she gave no friend chocolate, and he adds that he agrees with Adachi's opinion that they should do away with friend chocolate, since it just causes misunderstandings and makes men sad. She asks if the coffee is too bitter, and he confesses that when he told her he was bad with sweets, that it was a lie. Seeing her chance, she rummages through her bag and offers the cupcake, and he questions the kanji as she breaks it in half, offering him one of the sides. He thanks her, and she says it's okay, turning to him and adding that it's fine if he misunderstands. They share a few tense seconds in silence, and she begins getting frustrated and tearing up, saying that in the end she couldn't get any of it right. He takes a bite of the cupcake and says it's good, trying to make her feel better, but she asks for a hug instead by opening her arms, which he gives. They walk back to her apartment, and he ruminates over his half cupcake, realizing that she's trying to tell him something. Class 2-3 is cleaning the hallways, and Yamada waves to our emo boy Ichikawa, who waves back but stops when he sees Adachi stomping angrily towards them. Uda asks what has him so upset, and he says he's wondering what to give back for White Day even though there's still a month to go. Ichikawa wonders how he got chocolate from Yamada and considers how he'll live over the next month, and whether he'll be able to get anything good for her, while Adachi argues with Uda about what kind of chocolate Mo gave him. Kai insists that Mo clear up the misconception, but instead, she eggs it on, facing Adachi and saying whether it's friend or love chocolate is up to his interpretation. Ichikawa thinks of her as a wicked woman while she loudly declares that she'd love some AirPods, making Adachi even more paranoid. He goes over gift ideas with the boys, eventually settling on sexy lingerie, but considers how, since he got homemade chocolate, he'll need to give handmade lingerie, which the others agree is a bad idea. Kanzaki adds that for girls it only has to be chocolate on Valentine's, but White Day can be a lot of things. He says he's considering Sweets Paradise, an all-you-can-eat sweets buffet, and Ichikawa says it's a good idea but that inviting her is the hard part. Adachi picks up on that and rushes to him, aggressively asking if he got chocolate from someone, and leaving him self-conscious. Ichikawa tries to dodge the question, but Adachi insists it has to be someone ugly if so, leaving Yamada and Mo scowling at him. After school, Adachi and Ichikawa run into Nanju. Ichikawa begins fading away, but Adachi brings him back to reality by telling him that they'll get advice from Nanju. Adachi tells about how Ichikawa got Valentine's chocolate, and how they're thinking about return gifts. Nanju looks slyly over towards Ichikawa, asking if it's true, while Adachi asks about what kind of gift is best for girls. Nanju says that men and women will never understand one another, and Ichikawa again shoots back, asking if that's the case. He begins a monologue, thinking about Yamada and how though women may think differently on things than men. But the more you get to know them, the more similarities you can find, and all it takes is some understanding. Adachi ignores his proclamation, focusing again on gifts, and Nanju suggests some clothes. Adachi gets excited, thinking he got it right. They then begin walking off, but Yamada sees Ichikawa from a window on the second story of the school, and waves to him, but she doesn't realize Nanju is nearby. Yamada suddenly notices him, and Nanju begins lifting his hand to accept and reciprocate the wave he believes is for him. But Ichikawa chops his hand down and waves aggressively in front of his face back to Yamada, causing her to blush and vanish. Our emo boy Ichikawa turns to address Nanju, and before he can say his feelings for her to him, Yamada suddenly swoops in and grabs Ichikawa, leading him away while saying a curt goodbye to Nanju. 